advocates now you imagine if you had a case and you get an advocate that is the lawyer the intercessor who goes before the judge and when they say okay this is the case against James. So, and my lawyer stands up and begins to cry. Oh, your honor. Oh, your honor. Oh, honor, honor. Oh, judge. Oh, judge, have mercy. Oh, judge, mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy. What? What? If you are in the dock, you just know I'm finished. I'm paid. You just say, Magena Kusivanze, Nevisus of Abisuli. And what will happen to you if you are there in court and your advocate is just crying? And when they ask the, what is your case? What is your plea? Ah, mercy. Mercy, mercy. Judge, you are slow to anger. You are bounding in love. You are full of compassion. You are merciful. So what is going on in the mind of the one who is about to be convicted? For example, if it's a case involving that if you don't win it, it's death. You imagine if Jesus, that's what he was doing when he came on earth. Crying and saying, mercy, mercy, mercy. Go to Sinze. Because they ask, what is your plea? And my plea is not guilty. But if your plea is guilty, huh? so intercession, the, the way I look at it, can you bring it closer here? is one who stands as an advocate. So meaning that I must understand the procedures In fact, in high-density intercession, you find yourself more in activities of representing, representing others, representing nations, representing families, in the courts of heaven all in the acts of heaven 
of divine are you, I hope we all see there uh huh okay thank you God bless you so it's it's more than not someone is saying I am weak But one who stands in the gap. And standing in the gap does not mean you are weak. In fact, it's your strength that should enable you to stand in the gap. We said yesterday, high density intercession has different aspects. But what is more important about it, it is shifting, some of the shifting, shifting the spiritual atmosphere of territories. Don't forget that. Have you read somewhere? Doing what? Shifting the spiritual atmosphere of territories. Now, when we talk about territories, it may be where you live. Hello? It may be where you work, your office. And you have gained the ability to alter. Have you heard the word alter? Now, all things in the world are interconnected. So a slight change on one changes all. Have you heard that? A slight shift on just one all change. If you are calculating an equation, a slight change in one step affects the whole process. Kankademukategiri. You cannot say, it, I just missed a point zero zero four. Now that slight point affects all the other results. You've missed it. Because if you get this, tonight you will pray. To you, it may be just removing this plate from here to here. But this moving of this to here set in motion a multitude of other changes. That when you say, I am here, as an agent of the kingdom of God. Only that you have altered currents, waves, including the oxygen in the place. It's just a simple change. So, shifting atmosphere of territories. The enemy does not take it light. Hallelujah. The enemy does not take it as a simple intrusion. You, uh, no, 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 no. It's just something small. If you are 
going in this direction and you alter slightly the move from here to just a, a small angle just a point from the direction taking at this moment can he can i show something oh where's my marker can i have my body here do i have a second board majita okay let me use this one Is the marker. Okay. If this is the course I'm coming from here, I'm coming to you. This is my, where I'm going. And I am coming from here. So I'm supposed to have this course. Okay. But if I shift just a simple angle like that. Here, it looks small. Just I'm still here. But how about if I, by the time I reach here, where will it be far from here? It will be far. But at the time of the shift, it was a small angle. Are you getting me? You, it, is, it may look insignificant. But after years, the shift here has caused the destination to change to here. Hello? And it will, if nothing happens, it will keep going far from the destination. It may even reach somewhere like here. But it started with a small deviation. A little change. That's why I want to tell you that in the kingdom of, in the spirit realm, a slight shift is not taken lightly. Can you imagine a great king who has the armies, systems, power, thrones. One day he hears that just a baby is born. Just a baby. Just a what? But to a king who understands spiritual things, he understood the spiritual realm has now shifted. To the extent that he decides to kill all the babies, three years to kill them. Why? Why are you killing babies when you're a king? The baby has no guns, has no weapons, has no army. But why kill them? Just a baby. You may think he's a mad king, not so. You may think he's a what? A mad king. But he understands this is a baby. But a king who is able to cause changes. Are you getting, are you getting me? And that baby has not just come for the sake of coming. I'm talking about Jesus. 
He's not born because God just said, I think today, one, two, three, four, five, six, kanem, anabiri, kafumba, mwanyi. I think Jesus should be born. No. If you are a student of the Bible, you'll find two people who caused the birth. Who set in motion. And no one knew them. The only time we know them is when the baby appears in the temple when the baby is eight days old. Hello? And a prophetess called Anna called Simeon appears. Only two of them. Hello? Only how many? Do you know Anna Prophetess Anna we don't see her anywhere in the Bible prophesying Hello? She's not what? Have you, did, did you, have you read anywhere in the Bible the prophecy of Anna? But if you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 36, there was one, Anna, a prophetess. Hello? Who is Anna? A prophetess, the daughter of Panel of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. This woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Someone say, Anna. Now, look at these friends in this class. Anna has taken many years shifting, altering, programming, orchestrating redemption. Oh, somebody has not got it. Anna got married seven years in marriage. Her husband dies. She goes into the temple and serves God in prayer and fasting. What was she doing? For I don't know how many years. Maybe she married at 20 and after 27. Then for over 50 years. She is, what is she doing? Huh? What is she doing? She is prophesying. She's doing what? For years. But how is she prophesying? She's prophesying. She's prophesying in prayer and fasting. The thing is off. Can you help me please? 
his own. What is she doing? She is this is her major foundation. Her major foundation is the spirit of prophecy. And she is consecrated. She's what? She's going through consecration. For many years, if you found Anna after 30 years, you would think she's doing nothing. In fact, if she was in our churches, one day she would, we would preach a sermon. You're always in church. Find something to do. You're always here. Be productive. Hello? Be productive. You are there day and night. I might tell someone. Anna would be chased out of some of the churches. Because Tava will be civil. After this fast, she goes into another. But what is Anna doing? She's creating the atmosphere for the birth of redemption. Mm. Are you getting me? No one knows what's going on. But she is clearing. She is clearing the realm. Until when Jesus is born, when he appears in the temple, Anna could recognize him. Can I say something? I don't want to miss it. High density intercession also involves the work of a midwife. Some was a midwife. Seen, I don't know what word I can use to give it uh, a working word or a midwife thing. I don't know. But it's a work as a midwife work. You may not be birthing, but you are facilitating the birthing. One of the lessons we learn in intercession is that scripture in Isaiah that says, can a nation be born in one day? Before Israel travailed, she gave birth. Hallelujah. You may be, have conceived and you are ready to bring forth. But weak Blocked until the midwife who facilitates the bathing. Hallelujah. There are many visions, there are many callings that died. Not because the one who conceived did not receive it, but because there was no midwife. The vision died. God gave the vision. The pastor, the woman of God, 
the preacher, the evangelist, the president, got the vision. The prophet declared it. The one supposed to receive it, received it. But when time came for it to be birthed, there was no midwife. There was no one who says, push, hold on, breathe, let me receive the baby. There are times in my intercession, I ask myself, who am I? Am I the mother or I am the midwife in this? Sometimes the Lord causes you to identify a move that is about to come. The early days of a move. I might tell someone. God causes you to identify, to see, to participate, and you don't know what is prompting you to go in that place every night. Every night. And there's nothing. You're not in the worship team. You're not part of that ministry. But something is about to be birthed, and God causes you to be there. The question is, who am I here? Am I here to receive the miracle the man of God is declaring or I'm here as part of the midwife team? Huh? Am I the father to the baby? Am I a mother? Or I am here in the role of a midwife? The baby is being born. And I say it again. That some of you watching. Some of you in this training. You have had the opportunity of being present when things are being born. Only after some time you are the one that tell everyone I was there when it was born and I saw it die. I saw it die. Actually, chale ni kukufa nganchira ba ni manya chikenda kufa. In fact, that was God. That was the revival. And I was there. We were the people who were there. And they began messing it and I said, okay, let it die. Let them kill it. And the question would be, why were you there? Maybe you were part of the midwives. You were part of those that sanitize the room that no infection comes into this newborn baby because they are vulnerable. What, why, why were you present in the bathing room? Hello? Praise the Lord. And I don't think the bathing room is a beautiful room. Hmm? Mothers, tell me. I don't think the bathing room is a room you can be and ask for coffee and ice cream and makeup. It's not a pleasant place. And you can easily be offended. You can easily be scared. It's messy. The bathroom room is messy. A matter of someone. Some of, I see some young people, yeah, these, these men of Kajanja, who say, 
you know, we are modern. I want to be present at that moment when my wife is giving birth. I want to receive the baby. So one day we were there. We had gone with the brother. So excited. Pastor, I'm going to receive. He went in. Half a, a minute, 30 seconds was back. I said, why? Pastor, I did that. No, but no, no, let's go. No, 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 it can't be. No, I'm saying, what? but you say you're going to receive the baby. I said, Pastor, I don't have the strength. So it's messy. It's, it's not what I want to see. It's a mess. I didn't want to ask other questions, further questions. I said, no more other questions. But I understood it. According to the brother, he said, I can't stand it. It's a bathing moment. That's your neighbor may be the mother. And when the mess begins, you say, I don't understand this. I think they are possessed. Because the bathing moment the mother is possessed. She's possessed. In fact, you, who you are a suspect, who may have caused that old thing, <laughs> if you are present, you can lose your nose. The cow plead. Eh? He can get your shirt and tear it. So is she is possessed. And because she is possessed, needs to be facilitated. So most times I ask myself, am I the mother or am I a midwife? My role in this, is it to receive the miracle, to be prayed for, or to spiritually shift the atmosphere to be conducive for the revival? To keep going. You imagine if half the people who participate in the early days of the revival come to understand it's not the preacher. It is the atmosphere. And our role is to make it conducive. My role is to shift to cause things in the spirit for the baby to be birthed. Are you getting it? Okay. I've given you several instances. One is advocate. Two is midwife. The advocate. Huh? I love, you know, sometimes my lawyer, when he's defending something about me, you sit down and like say, where has he got all the, you know, as if someone is sweating, hitting the table and say, hey, my God, this guy, this is his, it is his. It's his. Are you getting me? And when he, good lawyers, when they lose a case, sometimes they don't sleep through the night. It's not, he's not the one going to prison. But he has said, I have lost my case. Don't mess up with my case. The same with intercession. Advocate. But in the lawyers, in their world, there are some cases that not every lawyer would be allowed to participate. There are even that we call the senior counsels. Are you senior advocate? I mean senior intercessor. Eh? Now the senior don't don't, don't like it. some people will say for us we are H we are HDIs. We are senior intercessors. No, not because of you're just calling it 
what have you shifted? I said this and I've said it again. The kingdom of the enemy does not take HDI lightly. When you start focusing on territories, Satan will not take you lightly. Because he has seen people who began like you. He has test, he has history. He says, so and so. saga. By the time we woke up, he had gathered a million people. So everyone who gets interested in territorial intercession is a threat. And Satan, uh, one thing I've known about him, does not take chances. The enemy, the kingdom of Satan, does not take chances. Does not say, that's too small. Some of you may say, I'm just nothing. I'm just a little being somewhere. Why are all why is Lucifer himself coming for me? He does not take chances. He knows he has history that there are those people who came and you may have despised them. You may have thought they have no impact. Only to cause havoc. So he knows. In other words, he will not take your light. And he knows that he has to do it now. Just to remind you, the war is going to be severe. Hello? It's going to be what? It's going to be severe. Why? In the past, you asked for food, for visa, for money, for good sleep, for a wedding. But now, you are asking for a territory. Hey? Hello? When someone begins to say, ah, bampeyo kurumone, bampeyo kumuogo. But when he says, bansadi de kuchivanja. What? Huh? Are you getting what I'm talking about? When you are in the home, and you are asking for sugar, for bread, for shirts, mm, yeah, it's bamwe. But the day you say, sir, can I take a portion from here to there? Then the man says, wait a minute. This one is no longer mukozo bukozi. You imagine the mukozi in your house asks for a portion of your chibanja. And that's how many people who came in our families, took over our families, they came and then began to ask, can I plant my beans here? After years, their children, their children's children now own the whole property. Said, quota? Hmm. Hallelujah. When someone begins to ask for a territory, it's not a visitor. And that shows there is no plan of Kucharuka. Huh? Are you getting me? If you were in my house, every three months I must change rooms. 
Nino kuchuse bisenge. Nino mamukozi. I tell you, next month I've changed. Go in the other bedroom so that you don't own a territory. I have seen those who came as workers dispossess the sons of the house. Can't cheat them. I have seen those who came as workers dispossess wives. She can even ask you, Mommy, I don't want you to come in my kitchen. You are the owner, you are the wife of the home. But now, the kitchen is her territory. And she begins to ask you, don't disorganize my kitchen. And also you surrender it. You tell everyone, the kitchen please is for so and so. Narumans. Give it to Narumans, not so. Then Narumans move slowly. And now to the bedroom. Huh? And she asks for a territory. Hallelujah. When you see her, now she's the one who receives money for upkeep from the husband. And you are the wife. You've lost territory. Bakuambi, bakulideu. Eh? She have lost what? Territory. Slowly she takes over the shopping. Slowly she takes over. The children take them to school. For you think you've got a helper. She's doing the shopping. Now she's visiting children at school. Many wives, you lost territory. No one is saying amen here. Many wives, you, st you have the title without a territory. You've missed it. Many people here, you have the title, but you don't have a territory. When they talk about Lugala, who do they talk about? Pastor, when you tell someone, I'm from Rugala, who do they ask you, are you from so and so? Huh? Eh? Why? Territorial. Someone said, Territorial intercession. Territorial what? Until the speed realm recognizes that you are in charge of the territory. In fact, every territory you go to, the owner will check on you. How did you come? That what report is. The territory owner, the territorial authority will check on you. Either you submit or you dispossess. And it's this kind of intercession. Hello? I love people who understand that when you go into a place, ask God for it. Hey! If I come to your house, I ask God for the territory because some many territories are unoccupied. If you allow me one night in your house, I ask for the territory. I don't want to be under someone's territory. Someone write in your book, Territorial Intercession. What if each one of us began asking for a territory and we divided the city into zones 
And every intercessor is in charge of that zone spiritually. Hey, you've not heard it. What if we said you are in charge of this division? You and you, this is your territory. Whatever happens there, you are responsible. You are responsible for the spiritual atmosphere of that territory. And you tell God, concerning Katwe, ask me. From today, oh God, concerning State Square, ask me. Hello? Concerning where? Concerning Nakwadi, I am here. I am not just an intercessor, I'm a territorial intercessor. The affairs, the activities, the people, the heavens, the kings, the thrones, the altars, now it's me. Hello? Have you ever asked for a territory? Give it to me. Caleb and Joshua were territorial intercessors. The things say, you know, you will watch and see the transformation because many territories are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are many Macedonian saying, come and help. In the book of Acts, you know, Paul sees the man from Macedonia telling him, come and help us. So a territory is calling a man of God. Don't miss what I've said. A territory is calling a man of God to rescue it. Not the people. Paul is not interested in building church here and church here, becoming a bishop, apostle, what? But look at Paul's ministry. Athens, Ephesus, Philadelphia, all these places. He's more territorial oriented. He's interested in territories. Many of us, we are interested in titles. So many have titles without territories. Can you ask your neighbor, what is your territory? <coughs> ask, please, Dr. Mutia, to the interaction. You have a title. You are pastor. You are apostle. Whatever title you may have. You have a title, son of God. But where is your territory? Where is your sphere of influence? Where you are in charge? Where is your territory? That in the speed realm, they say, in that, ask James. That's, that's his territory. And you know that's my territory. Even, even a dog knows its territory. Dogs, animals, bulls, cows. They know their territory and they mark their territories. As a church, have we marked the territory? Are we territorial in operation or we are just individualistic? Someone will come and take over the territory and then you will complain. A man will come and take three years or five years of intercession asking God for Kampala. Asking God for the territory. 
before they preach a sermon, before they conduct a, con a crusade, before they buy a building, they can find a room and say it will take five years before you put out a signpost possessing the territory. First being in charge. You imagine you get one million dollars to start a business. You decide to put it in the bank and you tell the bank keep this money for three years. In the, I'm going to start a business after three years. But in three years, I will not do anything. I will first spiritually own the territory before I start the business. After three years, that money will have multiplied 30%. But in the three years, you would have cleared the atmosphere to start. Then you own the territory. Do you think you can trade, you can have ministry, whatever, in someone's territory and possess and prosper? Do you think you can run it and prosper? You just got the money. And you donated it to the principalities. Some of you sold your father's property. Got all the money and you donated. And you, are, you thought you were doing business, but you were donating it to the principalities. You donated your inheritance. Gave it out. Because when you sold the land, you bought it. Then the land rejected you because you did not understand territories. Hallelujah. Some say territories. Say territories. I'm giving just that example. Okay? So we said it's about shifting the spiritual atmosphere of territories. And I want to emphasize that remember it is high density intercession meaning concentrated intercession. What if all of us we focused the next three years only on shifting the spiritual atmosphere of this city. Only the th for three years. Or two years. And we just said, <clears throat> okay, we are going to focus on territorial, on this territory. Gather every information we need. Ask questions. Walk. Fast. Worship. Present cases. And after three years, we say now the territory has opened. The territory has opened. I already share this testimony, but most of you, you know it. And I've written, I've written it in my book, Delivered from Deep Darkness. About the 20 women you heard a story? You've read a story? How many have read a story? About the 20 women. If you've not got it, go and read. The year was 1999. The kingdom of darkness ready to shift to own the world by the year 2020. And a lot of activities are going on. At the same time, 
The Lord convicts a young man to start a prayer. He gathers 20 women, illiterate and old. He tells them, we are going to do this covenant praying. Six hours every day. Six hours every day. And we're going to do it for 90 days. He didn't know what he was doing. But it was a conviction from the Lord. The occult realm investigates the whole world and discovers it's only as one part, one territory that they failed to control. A highway. And they discover many of the agents sent against this in this territory, they die or they get converted. What killed almost 200 satans and witches? It was not these women saying, We bind you, we kill you. They created a spiritual atmosphere that if you are not for God, you come into that atmosphere. You either die or you are converted. Huh? Have you ever entered into smoke? A place that is the smoke? You don't need someone to tell you choke. One, two, three, choke. You don't need someone to tell you, oh, now, get ready, you're going to choke. No. What you found there caused changes, including your eyes and your breathing. So these women were doing six hours concentrated prayer. And in the six hours, they said, because we are going to be focused, we all must be in the same place at the same time without fail. And no one should join us until we end this session. And they said, if one of us misses, we start again. Because now it means the bond has been weakened. If one of us comes late one minute, all the days are now wasted. We start again. They said if we are on day 89 and one of us turns up one minute late, we start again. Can you imagine that kind of high density. So they could come, all of them, a few minutes before, the, before 3 p.m., the starting time. Exactly the starting time. They start praising. They start praying. They start exalting God. I asked the pastor who was leading them some years back, I asked him, what were you doing for six hours? He said, the Lord could give them the agenda of the day. And each day had one agenda. They could come and the Lord said, today is blood of Jesus. And they speak that word, blood of Jesus, for the six hours. From 3 p.m., to nine six hours by the time they came to 40 day 40 
they were in charge of the territory. And they were now bathing a 70 years revival. If they were to go until the 90th day, what they will not be the preachers. They will not be the worship team. But in the world, because by the day, by 40 days, it was discovered within 40 days they were able to revive 7,000 churches in different parts of the world. 7,000, not 700. Different pastors and churches in different parts of the world. Middle East, South America, where where those that had known the Lord and backslid or were churches that were called, suddenly they were waking up. The pastors, the leaders did not know why. That someone who was called, who was in sin, wakes up and is stirred up. And they say, what has happened? And they say, I don't know, but I just feel I'm stirred up. And now I want to pray. I want to walk right. It was those six hours that were waking up 7,000. And if they were to, pros to continue in their six hours to the 90 days, the 7,000 would erupt into a great move of God. You imagine revival in 7,000 places. Hello? Revival in 7,000 places. And I was assigned 